Hi guys, Jordan from PP Campus. Just going to be doing your handover video on your pull-up. So we're starting with the bonnet. We've got the washer fluid reservoir over here on the left-hand side. Power steering fluid under here and the coolant reservoir. Uh, so that's basically the expansion. Um, you can get to that by lifting this little cover off with these little lugs down here. Um, so yeah, that literally just pops off and it's really easy to get to. Uh, brake fluid, attached to the little servo down the back. Your yeah, engine oil goes in through this top cap here and the uh, dipstick for that is there with the red top. Your engine battery in these cabs sits under the floor in the actual cab itself, not under the bonnet. Um, so if you wanted to jump start the van, you've got this little cap. So you undo this little cap and there's a little uh, positive terminal under there and your negative is just here. Uh, so that's how you get to the, uh, how you get to that. If you wanted to jump start the van, that's where you go to. Or obviously you could go to it um, from inside if you wanted to, but you know, uh, yeah. So the actual battery sits underneath the floor, just under there. Um, to actually open up the bonnet, is this little lever inside the passenger door. And so that's how I've opened the bonnet up. Not really much to show you on the passenger side, except for the electric window. Um, you've got a little sort of 12 volt and a USB socket down here. And I mean, obviously you've got access to all the bits and pieces that the driver does, but I'll show you those in a minute. Um, hazard lights, you can lock the cab from inside. Uh, and that would have been a heated rear window. So obviously it doesn't do anything now because uh, the original window isn't on it. All right, I'll just go around uh, this side of the van. So we've got the diesel filling point here. Again, still on the near side. Uh, the actual main driver's key the ignition key is for that one there. That's how you unlock that. Fresh water inlet. So push in and round to the left to open that up. And then push in and round to the right to lock it up. And then if I show you now, once you've done that and it won't go any further, pop this key in that hasn't got any drawing, uh, any sort of color on it. And then just turn it one way and pull it out. And now it just spins, so you can't take that out. The waist tap is under here so you've got the big red lever it's open at the moment so if i close it up it would look like this like that so that won't let any water come out of it just the last few little drops and that's fixed up up the top so next we've got the hookup point so that's where you plug the hookup into it if you want to hook it up at home or on your campsite wherever that's where you do that you have to tap it in a bit like that i just like i just did uh, to get it to properly lock up then we've got the uh trimmer so this is your inet ready heating and boiler system this is the actual vent for that and i've got it on at hot water at the moment and so i can feel hot air being pumped out the bottom through the little vent underneath so that's how you can double check that it's definitely working uh toilet cassette we've got a new new cassette on the way because this one's a little bit uh too used for our liking really um so there is another one on the way for this uh, but basically it pulls all the way out and you've got this little green button at the back which you need to hold down whilst you empty it out um, so it's a pressure release valve and then to pop it all the way back in just go all the way until your little green cap latches over like that and you can't pull it out and the same kind of idea to lock it up make sure that you've got the uh they've gone over because they undo like this so you've got to make sure you hear this click noise and then use this again this this key in there turn it one one way now it's locked up next one you've got your gas locker so you've got a massive gas locker in here you've got space for two 13 kilo bottles um, or obviously two smaller ones or one you know whatever you like um, but at the moment you've got a gasket bottle in here which is refillable uh, and it's refillable via this little bayonet fitting style cap down here and that goes back on by pushing in and round like that. So to actually turn this bottle on, it's on at the moment, but you want to go anti-clockwise around to the left. And if you remember to go all the way on so you can't go any further, when you come back to the bottle to turn it off, you'd only be able to go one way. So you know that clockwise around to the right is definitely off. Don't worry about any of this stuff up here. This is just for our testing, um, especially that little cap there. There is a little button on the side here, a little green button. Um, and if you ever find that you turn the bottle on, and you know that there's gas in it, but you don't get any gas come through into the van, 
just push and hold this little button down for three seconds and then it should pump through uh, like that. Your pigtail here for the refillable has got to a 2025 because it's steel braided um, and I've replaced this pigtail as part of the hab check anyway. So that's a 2021, so you've got till 2026 for that. Right, so um, around the back, we've just got the couple of back windows and the bike rack, which is a four bike bike rack. Um, it, I don't even really need to explain that. I don't think it's uh, they are quite easy. Just literally pull that bit out of the way and then pull the whole thing down towards you from the middle. <laughs> And then obviously that'll lay flat. You can do these little bits up here, around here as well if you want to for sort of extra security. But you basically pop your uh, bike's tires, uh, wheels through these and then grab onto the top of it with those. Um, but yeah, couldn't be much easier to be honest. Lock that back up just by pushing it and then these little bits in the middle close up against it. You have to push quite hard because that makes it quite strong so it won't open up when you're driving. But yeah, nice new new style bike rack. All of the lockers on the uh, off side, the driver's side, have all got these little latches on them, um, including the actual habitation door uh, at the bottom. So they hold themselves up nicely. In the sort of underneath the, the uh, bed here, we haven't really got much to show you apart from you've got a a vent here for your heating if you ever needed to have any heat in here um, but obviously that'll keep this bottom bunk warm as well uh, windows all work as they should but again uh, we've got all the catches being delivered so that will be fixed for you uh, because quite a lot of them are damaged to be fair so we're going to replace them all um, all the ones that need replacing um, all right so that's about it for in there this little locker here, or this little latch here. I'll just close this up for a sec. This is the external gas point. So that's been pressure tested as part of the, the whole system. Uh, so that's where you put your barbecue point into. Uh, so that opens right up like that. So yeah, that's your barbecue point, full finch. It's nice, easy to use little unit. And again, just give them a little tap like that before you start driving. And just to point out as well, uh, the way that these or well, this rear locker works. You've got just the white key and the red key at the bottom. So that's the other two keys you got on this set. So just the white one here. So close it up and then I can't really show you with one hand, but basically you want to turn it whichever way it'll go like that and then push it in. And then that's locked up. And then the same for the bottom one, turn it. It is easier with two hands. All right, and that's totally locked up and uh, watertight as well. These two big vents here on the side are for the fridge. So if you put your hand over here, you can feel a little bit of warm air, not very much because it's a hot day anyway, um, but a little bit of warm air coming out there where I've got the uh, fridge lit up on gas. And then uh, that's it. Don't think there's anything else to show. I'll just make sure there's nothing under here. No. Okay. All right. So if I show you in the cab now, in the driver's side, I'm not trying not to make it too messy because it's all been cleaned up. Um, so straight away, you can see on the stalks here, on the left-hand stalk, we've got the main on and off light switch there, um, indicators as well, and your flash and your full beam, which is by pulling it all the way and then pulling it all the way again for off. Um, the washers and washer fluid are on the right hand stalk as well as your intermittent uh, wiper speed so yeah I mean all of this sort of stuff down here is all just kind of uh, your fog light here and your light adjustments uh, your cruise control is all down here on this bottom right left hand stalk so you can turn it on uh, off cancel resume do whatever you like go up and down speed six speed manual gearbox which reverses pulling up on this lever here over and up on the left to find reverse and then if i just pop the uh, 
key in the ignition. Okay, it's steer and lock off. I'll show you, you got your, we've got a nice view of the park behind us. <laughs> um, you got your high level reversing camera. So that basically acts as a rear view mirror, essentially, um, because you can't obviously see through the back very easily whatsoever when you're driving. So this is basically your rear view mirror, which in my opinion is better because you've got a really nice wide view of it at all times. But obviously you can turn it off if you want to, just by turning that button there. Um, so if, you, if it was winding you up when you were driving, you can just do that and then use it when you need to. Um, Single in Sony head unit. Um, you've got air conditioning, so that'll work. If you've got the fan above zero and push this button here, you get the light come on. And then obviously you can go through and choose um, where you want the air to go to. And also your temperature setting is on the left hand side. Really nice design on these ones actually, I think personally. Um, yeah, so I'll leave that like that so that it'll come on when you start it up. Uh, electric adjusting mirrors over here on the right hand side. So left main mirror, left bottom mirror, right main mirror, right bottom mirror. And they all work just as they should, just by turning like this, wherever you want it. So you can see the mirror turning, moving, adjusting. So, and then obviously you've got your two window, uh, electric window buttons. You have also got this little 12 volt outlet socket that's been fitted aftermarket up here. So if you needed like a sat nav or something like that plugging in, you have got a little one over here, which is factory, but you've also been, uh, someone's fitted this one up here as well. So you can use that as well if you need to. All right, so I'll switch that off now and show you around the outside, uh, run the inside, sorry, shall I say. Oh, one thing to point out as well, it might be self-explanatory really, but um, just like to mention that the handbrakes on these are on the, on the right hand side of the seat uh, rather than on the inside. So when you do jump out, because they are quite high up, um, just be careful you don't uh, hit yourself on this because it does hurt. <laughs> um, so yeah, just, just a bit of caution on that one. <laughs> uh, all right, so straight away, I'm just gonna show you um, your Milenko lock. I have written on the hab sheet, um, it doesn't have a key, but you can close it and lock it up from inside, all right? So at the moment, that lock, if I show you, that lock is this here. And what I'm doing is just literally pulling it over the door like that and then locking it like that. So now that won't move. And if I unlock it like that, I can move it up back into the middle or all the way over to the right. But I'll leave it in the middle and then you can lock that up like that. All right, so you can, it's really, really easy to use and they're really strong as well. Um, Obviously you've got the, the, the normal lock on the actual door itself as well, uh, which you can do with the key, but extra precaution, uh, I would I would advise you to use them because they're really, really strong. Um, up above the door, you've got the main sort of control panel and all the bits and pieces to control the van. Um, the main on and off switch for everything 12 volt is just here. So if I, if I click this rocker down to off, everything would just turn off. Um, so at the moment it's on, this button up here tells you your battery voltages. So if I click up, it will show you the engine battery level. So 12 and a half volts, perfect. If I go down, it shows you the leisure battery voltage, 13 volts, which by the way, the leisure battery is under this seat here. All right, just literally under, underneath the piece of wood under that seat, really easy to get to. So that's your battery voltages. And this over here is your water, uh, water levels. So if I click up, it shows you we've got half a tank of fresh water. If I click down, it gives us 25% of wastewater. All right. So you've got aux, lights, and pump here. Aux is things like ignition and things like that for all the uh, the cooker and everything like that. Lights, obviously, is your lights, and pump, obviously, is your pump. So the first thing you wanna do is just come in here and turn all of that on, um, and then come over to here to your uh, actual tap and just pull the water through let the pump run up and just make sure there's not lots of air being chucked out of it. Turn it to the hot side, make sure your boiler's got plenty of water in it. Again, you're just looking for big pockets of air and things like that, but there you go, no air in the system whatsoever. Tap down, pump will run on for a second and then it will turn off.
just like that. All right, I'm not sure if you could hear that in the video, but that is exactly what a, a motorhome's pump should do. Um, okay, so next to that, we've got the iNet Ready system, the Truma iNet Ready. So if I click, what I've done there is I've just clicked on the button once. If I go to the left-hand button here, which is the motorhome sign, that's the heating. So if I click on that, I can scroll through and choose what temperature I want the inside of the van to be. And then, you know, the boiler will just do its own thing and it will get the van to that temperature um, via this little thermostat here. The next one next door to that is the hot water, which I've got on hot at the moment. I could use boost, hot or eco or off, which I will turn it off now. The next one after that is your energy setting. So we've got it on gas at the moment. I could choose mix one or mix two, which is gas and electric or electric one or electric two which is just electric only, but I'm going to leave it on gas for now. And then finally, the last one uh, is just your fan for your heating. So you can go through and choose vent and then click on that and then go through, pop your fan to whatever sort of number you want. So that's the most powerful, or you can turn it down back to off. Okay. So I know that's sort of quite quickly gone through it, but it's really easy to use when you can see that this one is heating, this one's hot water, energy selector and fan. It's so easy to use once you've got the hang of it. Um, but I, th I think I remember putting it on the hab sheet, writing down what they do and how many amps each, each one pulls and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, and to turn that whole system off properly, just push and hold on the button until it comes up saying off like that. So yeah, super easy to use. Um, okay, so I've shown you this, the, the tap. So I've shown you what you need to do. They first come into the van, make sure there's no air in the system. Uh, and also at the, at the same time, that's making sure that your boiler's got water in it. You've got 12 volt socket here, uh, or USB, sorry, should I say, 12 volt and a 240 socket, which will obviously only work when your hookup's plugged in. Um, what we got so nearly all the lights around the van in fact i think they all do they've all got their own individual switches on them um so you can really go through and make it your own as to which ones you do and you don't want on um you know and they're really nice led lights as well uh, and i see they've all been checked as part of the hab check this window is the only one that's slightly different and that opens up just like that by sliding it open um all right so you've got the three-way fridge over here in fact, actually, just so I can do it in order. Um, you've got your two burner hob, which couldn't be any simpler. You've got your igniter down here. So I don't know if you can see it, just about. Uh, igniter down here for those, and then your actual main on and off switch is just like a household one. Push in and round to allow the gas to come through and then ignite it down there. You've got thermocouples on these. So which that's the little bit of metal at the back here. So basically, when you light this up, the thermocouple will sense that, the, that there's burnt gas coming through, so it's hot gas coming through. If somehow the flame got blown out, the thermocouple would notice and it would stop the gas from being pumped through so that you don't fill the van up with any unburnt gas. And they've both been checked. They work as they should. Underneath that, we've got separate ignition, which is this button here. But this is basically your uh, oven and grill. So if I push in around to the right, that's letting gas through for the grill. If I push in and round to the left, that's letting gas through for the oven. And like I said, exactly the same, just push this little igniter button whilst doing that and just poke your head in and see if you can see, you know, make sure you can see it lit up. Um, but I have checked that as part of the hab check and it works as it should. And they've also got thermocouples on them uh, as does every other gas appliance actually. Uh, but they've all been checked and they all work as they should. So, now I'll show you the uh, fridge. So it's a three-way fridge and it's a automatic energy selecting fridge at the same time. So what that means is, let's see if I can, oh no. Right, so the main on and off switch for it is here on the left-hand side. Um, and then it's really easy after that. Okay, so first of all, we'll start on the right-hand side. We've got this button here. So this is your temperature selector. If I click on that, you can go through and go from one, two, three, four, or five, and you want to leave that on five, really. Um, there's no real, no real reason for having it any lower. Um, after that, you've got A, which is automatic, so that'll go through and choose any of the three 
uh, energies for you. Um, you know, it'll just sort of decide on its own which one it thinks is best. The battery is obviously the battery. Um, so that's the 12 volt side of the fridge, which is only for when your engine's running. Gas, which is on right now, is obviously gas. It lights up on the back of the fridge with gas and then it'll cool the fridge down like that. And then you've got the hookup. All right, so if I click this over now, it will start beeping at me because there's no hookup in, in the van. Um, so just let that do that, yeah? So that's what you get there. You get the little red light flashing at you. And then so at the moment, I've got the gas on. So I'll choose gas. And that's lit straight up. All right, so that's how you use it. Um, you need to get the fridges cold first before you go away, either first via the gas or the electric, um, which both are as good as each other, really. Um, if you want to leave it on overnight before you go away, that's the best bet, really. And generally speaking, if you can get a hookup cable outside and just pop it onto the hookup one uh, before you go away overnight, then that tends to be the best way to do it. That or the gas. Um, just depends which one you're more comfortable with. Uh, and then choose the 12 volt button there for when your engine's running. And then when you get to where you're going, everything will still be freezing cold inside. Uh, so yeah, that's how the fridge works. Pretty simple, really. Microwave up above the fridge there. I've checked that as part of the hab check. Uh, works as it should. And I've written down the hab sheet. I think it's about five amps is the maximum output for that. Uh, this obviously slides open so you can get to the bottom bunk. And I'll leave that across for now. This locker here has got these two uh, magnetic catches there. Uh, that's your sort of your, your wardrobe, if you like. You got the bathroom. So nice, simple, easy bathroom. Um, you've just got your shower, which is on a little sort of rocker, uh, hot and cold tap there. Uh, it drains out really, really well, nice and quickly, and. Uh, yeah, not really much to talk about there, if I'm honest. It's uh, <laughs> a good working shower. I did have to replace a couple of the O-rings inside the, uh, the sort of these little connections here because they're a little bit leaky, uh, but they're okay now. Uh, toilet. Like I said, we've got a new cassette turning up for this one, but to actually make the flush work, you just push and hold the button, and that runs from your pump. So that's your fresh water uh, tank for that. And then to actually empty it out, out and then close it up and that's it that's how your toilet works and then again exactly the same style tap as your, your kitchen sink hot and cold and again drains out really really well into the waste tanks just like it should you have also got this little locker here which is, i don't know if you noticed but that is a locker and your light switch should be Oh yeah, under here. All right, so you've got one over here for the shower and then two up here as well. So that's underneath there for that switch. Uh, yeah, like, so like I was saying, all the lights have got their own sort of buttons. I mean, they've got all the switches are, are, are down here um, for everything really. Your, most of your bits and pieces, so your 12 volt and all that kind of stuff is in this sort of area. Um, so if you took this little bit of cushion up and looked underneath the seat there, you've got your RCDs, which is your, your, your trip switches basically. Um, your leisure batteries just sat down there and you've also got a little bank of fuses. So if anything was to go wrong, like your lights and things like that, obviously let us know first. But if you wanted to, you can have a look under that seat there and just check the fuses. Um, and up here, you've got all of your, your TV sort of business. Um, so you've got your, you can use the TV in two ways. You've got the satellite, the MaxView satellite. So if you click and let that go on, that'll uh, catch on to its correct signal. Or you can turn that button on up there on the top left hand side, and then you'll see a little light come up there. And then that's the other way you can use your uh, your telly. Um, you know, so it's totally up to you how you how you hook it up. So that one on the right is basically your. Um, aerial booster so that works off of this one and this one here is just the black dome that you can see on the roof there um so yeah so push and hold on that to turn that off 
have had that all working as well. Works really, really nicely. Really clear picture on this nice Avtex TV. Um, yeah, can't complain about that at all. Um, paperwork for the van is all in this brown box over here. And um, yeah, so the bed, the, the ladder for the bed had been thrown all the way at the back. So I had to reach over and grab it. So I'll pop that there so that when you lift, lift this bed all the way out and hook it over these little uh, bits over here, that's the ladder right there that you can just hook onto these two um, and then it's nice and easy to get up um, but yeah okay so other than that I don't really know if there's much else for me to show you um, but yeah so if you think I've missed anything out or you want anything covering uh, then obviously let us know but otherwise we look forward to seeing you soon to collect your van thanks very much